Hi, welcome back to Helming Athletics. We're talking more running today, and I want to get into some different running cues that are really prevalent out there in the world, and I just want to pick them apart a little bit, uh, look into them a little more specifically, and really see if they're really the best cues out there or if we should be focusing on some other things instead. Now, one of the things that we see with running and with coaches, especially in the CrossFit world, is that we talk about this notion of falling. We say that we fall forward when we run, and that's a way that we generate movement. And it's a nice way because we take this PVC pipe and we think, hey, if I'm balancing and I just let this PVC pipe fall forward and I keep my feet up underneath me as I go, that's going to move me forward and that's going to get me going. And at first I like this as a general idea, but when I see this put in place in the real world, I see a lot of running in very stable, soft, and steady positions. People run with their chest forward like this, their hips a little soft, and now all of a sudden we need all these patchwork cues. Well, fall forward, but also keep your hips underneath you and do these other things. And let's step back and just remind ourselves really what cues do. What's their purpose? Well, a cue helps me, in a nice, clear, concise, simple way, give a little reminder to an athlete of a more complex idea. And for example, when we ever bring a new athlete into the gym, I always get start off with a little lecture on posture and abdominal bracing and stability. And the idea is that later on in a workout, I see them, we can say those simple words, get tight, right? And that's a little reminder of what that whole conversation and, and discussion we had before, as opposed to pulling them aside and having that five-minute conversation every single time. That would get annoying. That would get redundant. You'd start hating your coach. So we like those little simple things as that nice idea. Some cues, though, are not necessarily meant to be taken literally. And I'll give you an example from the swimming world. Swimming coaches want the body like this in the water, nice and smooth and balanced. But what happens, swimmers don't like to put their head and shoulders underneath the water, so they swim up like this. So what swim coaches say is like, hey, I want you to visualize as if you're swimming downhill. So all of a sudden they start putting their head and chest further in the water, but in reality it's just meant to get them here. We never really want people swimming downhill, but we want them to imagine that just to get them back to that center line and that baseline. Another example in the running world, we tell athletes that we want a firm but relaxed grip with the hands so the hands aren't going out and I don't have too much tension. So a visualization is run as if you're holding potato chips in your hand. Last time I checked, we don't really want you running with potato chips in your hand. Just that idea, right? That's a silly example of if I take this cue too literally, it doesn't really work. But just the idea of it. Now with falling, as I was saying, we focus on going forward, it helps create some movement, but what happens is that the chest drop down, we get a little soft, and especially when we see this hopping exercise, I don't think it's a very good drill in all honesty, because basically I have to unteach it afterwards. Instead, what we need to think about is what's really going on in running. I'm not just doing this, but in reality what I'm trying to do is drive those hips forward. And I know that when I drive those hips forward, I create tension in the system so that I'm landing in a more stable position. I'm driving my hips and this allows for better hip extension which is really where our running speed and running power comes from out the back. Falling is used as a cue to help this notion of displacing our center of mass over a base of support. Now if I'm a coach standing on the sideline, it'd be pretty dumb for me to be like, hey keep displacing, keep displacing, it's, a, it's, a, it's too geeked out of a term. But falling doesn't really work either. So the thing that I like to do instead is really, what's, what's the active thing? What are we really trying to get after? Well, we're really always trying to get those hips driving forward. We're getting the body into a little bit more of an extension position. So instead, let's focus all our cues and all our energies on those hips. If I drive those hips forward, that displacing is happening, and I'm creating tension in the system, and I'm setting myself up for a better pull, better cadence, all those things. So we always want the cues that are the simplest ones, most effective. If I have to add all these little patchwork things, it doesn't work very well. Last idea, once I really focus on what's going on with running, I see this hip extension happening, I can start to see and train this in other areas in the gym. We know that all of a sudden our Olympic lifts, where we're seeing that powerful hip extension, takes on new meaning. Box jumps takes on new meaning. The front of my kipping pull-up takes on new meaning. And even simpler things, arch rocks, rolling push-ups all those ideas. If we can learn to drive those hips forward, stabilize through there, we're going to create that falling, that displacement over our center mass, and uh, we'll get things going. So there you have it. 
Falling is dead to me. I've put it to bed. I don't use it anymore. I focus on those hips. That takes care of everything. So try it out. Let me know what you think. And uh, we'll be back next week.